Welcome to Nomadic Diaries, a podcast revealing secrets of life lived overseas. We use storytelling to deliver insight and information on what it takes to live, love, move, and travel across the globe. Our guests are professionals from the world of global mobility. We hope that by opening their diaries, to share their wisdom that you, our listener, can benefit and enjoy more ease and grace in your expat life abroad. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Nomadic Diaries. And today, uh, Sharon Fields and I, my name is Doreen Cumberford, we are just going to have a chat about what has occurred so far and the window we have had into the journey of so many people um, out there in the nomadic field. So how are you doing today, Sharon? I'm great, Doreen. I'm great. I I'm wonder- happy to, to have this conversation and kind of recap our um, journey this far. <laughs> exactly. And where are you today? I'm actually in Guanajuato. Um, I'm about an hour from you. Mm-hmm. I came over to see some friends and uh, hang out for a little bit. Excellent. That's And Guanajuato is a beautiful city in that it's so hilly, mountainous, and colorful. It is. I really like the magic of the tunnels. So the yeah. city was an old mining town, and it's now all the roads go through the tunnels, and it's the city is actually built down in a bowl. and um, you know, a lot of very steep stairs and all the houses are built, you know, in Into the tiers mountains. and levels. Yeah. Yes. Really? And they're all different colors. So like you said, it's very colorful and very happy. And it's a university town. So I like being around all that young energy. <laughs> it's good for us, isn't it? <laughs> it is so good. It's so good. So one of the things I was thinking about, um, This is going to be a recap conversation, and we're going to recap the conversation uh, or the episodes thus far on Nomadic Diaries. And thus far, we have interviewed nine people, um, but we've got four episodes out there walking around in the world, and we hope that they're caressing a lot of the ears of our listeners. And... um, I was just thinking about the variety of topics we've already covered. And the variety of topics to come. But wait, before we get too far down the line, (laughs) you need to announce what happened this morning. Oh, big news, big news this morning. When you create a podcast, one of the things you have to do is make sure that you're registered in all of the directories. And the directories are things like Spotify and Google Podcasts, etc., I do not consider myself techie, and I had managed to get them all completed except the big one, which is Apple Podcasts. So for three to four weeks, we were not available, and today, da-da-da-da, drum roll, we are announcing that we are finally on all the big um, directories, and we're finally on Apple Podcasts. So you can find us at Apple Podcasts Nomadic Diaries. So everyone out there should, number one, subscribe. <laughs> and then, of course, write mm. us a, a glowing review. Help us. Help us to know what you want to hear more about. Help us to know what subjects you want to hear about, what kind of guests you want us to have on the show, what we're doing that you don't like, because we we will take criticism as well. Sure. And, and feedback is important. I mean, feedback, whether positive or negative, we won't take as a personal situation, but right. we are really keen to serve the international, globally mobile community of people who are living your best life Mm -hmm. outside of their home countries. And that is a huge topic. Right. And we want to help everyone learn 
and and the younger generation to know that it's okay to get out there in the world. Don't be afraid. It's it's a wonderful lifestyle. And I think one of our guests talked about that. It was our very first guest, actually, Terry McGinnis. And she said, it's not right or wrong. It's just different. Open-mindedness and a desire to learn and a curiosity. And I think that's wonderful advice for everyone. Absolutely. And I really enjoyed that episode because Terry took the experience of living outside her country first of all in Brazil and then in China. And she transformed that into a career. And I think that that's a fabulous example. And that's what we're doing here, actually. We're taking our life lived and learned experiences and transforming them into useful material, hopefully. Right. Dare to lead. Dare to lead. That's right. (laughs) Good old friend, Brené Brown. (laughs) That's right. That's right. I think we've all enjoyed Renee's years of wisdom and so glad that there's people out there like our guests that are sharing their stories and sharing with us their courage and events in life. They're not always pleasant, but right. being at home, there's events that aren't always pleasant either. So exactly. I um I made a list this morning of some of the topics that we know we're going to cover. And it kept getting longer and longer. But the biggest ones were creating home overseas. And almost everyone we have talked to has alluded to the challenge that that is. How do you create your environment? And how do you set up new habits and new rituals? Um, Building a community. Yeah. Build your community, your group. Find your your tribe. Finding, finding your tribe, you know, increasing your vibe to find your tribe. That was the very first talk I ever gave to families in global transition about eight years ago. And that was I love a- that. I love that. <laughs> that was the title of the talk. I think one of the other keen subjects that is very appropriate and nowadays is the subject of third culture kids mm. or cross-culture kids because we live in a multicultural society and um, that has um, crept into our awareness and I of course am married to one and have a daughter who is a TCK and related to that is the subject of mental health. Mm, so true, so true. And Lisa Liang, our, our one of our very first guests, she really touched on that, and she's really using that in her day, daily life skills and career. Tell us what a TCK is in case there's still people that aren't aware of those ac- That's that a acronym. Very, <laughs> very good question. I apologize. TCK is a third culture kid, and that is a kid who is growing up outside the culture that is their parents' native culture. So my, for example, um, my daughter uh, grew up mostly in Saudi Arabia and Japan. And um, my husband is from the US and I'm from the UK. So we were already a cross-cultured family. And um, nowadays we have young adults who are walking around the planet, who may be, well, my husband's in his 70s, but there are people who are walking around the planet who have had a very different uh, experience of growing up and have felt isolated or lonely or couldn't fit in or have been moved multiple times. And um, we are just now learning the consequences of the long-term effects of multiple migrations and repatriations and expatriations. Exactly, exactly. Sometimes people live with this fantasy that, oh, I want to expose our my children to the world and to different cultures, and I, that will make them a well-rounded person. And there's there's, that's not always true. As Lisa stated, you know, children are not balls. They don't bounce. <laughs> exactly. And I, I, 
I encourage everyone to listen to that episode because it was very enlightening. It's not all negative, but it's also enlightening to be aware of the whole parameter of, of effects. And I think that um, there are so many unintended consequences mm-hmm. right. built into that. There are so many unintended consequences of moving ourselves to another country. Yes, we may have a dream that is pulling us, that is magnetizing us to go somewhere else. And it's great to live in that impulsion. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, there are other experiences that can happen that are purely unintended that we would never expect. So it's also building the mental thinking techniques and the mental health around how to cope with the downsides, the negativity, the not fitting in, the not belonging, the isolation, or the just plain disorientation that that happens to us. Right, right. Effects that we haven't been aware of and we haven't been haven't been able to cope with how to deal with them. So Are we planning any more guests that will help us with the TCK subject? Well, I do remember. (laughs) I'm sure that there will be lots of guests around this subject. And I do remember that next month we are interviewing um, Megan Norton. And she just wrote the book Belonging. And uh, she is a third culture kid. She was the daughter of an American diplomat. She has moved all over the globe and she is now um, coaching in that field also. So Megan is very well versed and very uh, competent and has a terrific voice to speak to that. And I'm sure there, that on the next list of people to have on as guests, there are more that I just can't remember. Of course, of course. And and everyone should subscribe so you'll know when these episodes are coming out. Exactly. <laughs> um, another, another subject that I wanted to say that we plan on covering and that we've already touched on a bit is intercultural competencies. And when Lisa Furland was on, she discussed that a bit. And Lisa and her family are living in Sweden. And they are now pretty much long term expats, because I think they've been there for maybe nine years or more. And um, Lisa had a lot to say about going as a accompanying spouse, relinquishing her career as an epidemiologist, and then finding that what her true purpose in life was, is as a book coach. Yes, I I found that very interesting because we as women and maybe our generation, we felt like we needed to put aside any ideas of a career and follow the man and the husband. And, and yet it, I always enjoy hearing stories about Lisa's where it, turns into something else and we follow our heart and and she's really doing great with that and that's where i think that's where talking about transformation comes in because when it's the transformational experience of having a nomadic journey i think it's great we can all put our bodies on a plane and we can get off at the other end and woohoo we've had a journey but if we haven't taken an internal journey, and my my big dream for nomadic diaries, quite frankly, is that we can understand not only the physical and exterior journey, but the internal journey that we all take inside our heads, that the effect of travel and culture immerses us in a different experience. So we become different kind of human beings. Right, right. And I really enjoyed hearing Carol's story. (laughs) She had similar, you know, situation and and has become a totally different type of um what would you call her? Um a guru? I don't know. <laughs> I think I think I knew her as a metaphysical minister. Um there you go. <laughs> who, had a, who had a church 
And now she practices a combination because she has a very wide breadth of faith. She has examined her inner cultural journey from the position of faith. And not only has she found and discovered the activity of ringing bells at the Church of England, but she also hangs out with witches down in Cornwall. Yes. You would think that those would be very, very um, diverse and possibly opposing experiences. But because of her training in how to embrace this and, and that's one of the parts of the nomadic journey, is that we learn to embrace conflicting experiences and somehow can resolve them inside ourselves to appreciate both ends of the scale. First, right, exactly. And she has a spouse who is supporting her in that. And I think that's beautiful. And they're, you know, loving a nomadic life between England and the US. And you're you're so right. It should be opposing, but it's not. And she's making it work. And I, I encourage everyone to listen to her episode to understand through her voice and and her eyes of what her life is like now. And I would just like to um, make a request of you, the listener, to bring yourself into this conversation and uh, write to us, reach out to us, make comments anywhere that you find us on social media or on the websites, Um, because Carol uh, is a master of um, talking about rituals and preparing and creating rituals. It's just the way her brain works. And she has done some amazing rituals for me in my different uh, chapters of my nomadic journey. So I hope that we'll have her back next year to talk more about rituals. You know, people sometimes have a reaction, I think, to that word. But ritual is like having breakfast. It's a habit. It's absolutely. Absolutely. It's a habit. (laughs) That's right. And that ties in with when you are nomadic and when you are global and you find your community, you become ritualistic. You have a ritual. You go to pickleball, you go to plays or concerts, you know. Well, one of the other things that we haven't talked about yet um, uh, is that one of the probably we will talk about language and the use of language and how we expect to have some people on who have spoken different languages or whose children speak different languages or how many different languages are spoken in the house or how many languages have the children learned in the course of their um, of their nomadic diary journeys. Right. So probably, yeah. I think the big thing, plus we'll probably touch on some logistics and visas. But quite frankly, that's not the inspiring part. And we really want to talk about the inspiring part, don't we? Right. The secrets, the the uh, as you know, as we've said, opening the diary and and reading about people's experiences that they want to share with us and and secrets and tips. And, yeah, we're not going to teach you how to pack your baggage. You know, everybody can do that. You know. well, we might, we might, if we're having fun and we're going on a trip, and we, yeah, yeah. we might. <laughs> I, I wouldn't rule it out yet. But um, on the other hand, we're not so much about yes, the baggage and the points. Oh and- yeah, we don't want to talk about people's baggage. We all have baggage. <laughs> we will talk about the mental baggage because I I talk a lot about the two suitcases, which is. One suitcase is the stuff we own and the stuff we carry around as as house sitters or digital global nomads or expats. We all have this stuff, but we also have stuff in our brains and that's our mental baggage. And I find that more interesting and more, hopefully more um, useful to you, the listener, to know that we all carry two lots of suitcases. Yes. And inspirational. You know, we we want to educate and inspire everyone, yes, everyone. So we yes, really hope everyone will tune in. 
and share with your friends. Don't forget to tell your friends. Oh, please. If you just tell one person that you're listening to our podcast, I wanted to add a little bit about one of the, the people we haven't talked about yet is uh, Linda Mueller. And oh, Linda, right. talked to, Linda talked to us about two things, really repatriation and how to move home. So we want to be full cycle in this. We're going to be reviewing the the inspiring part of the personal part of moving, launching yourself, going overseas, the challenges that you face overseas, and then the return journey. Because the return journey can be just as important, just as meaningful. And that, that is more of an internal journey sometimes than, than, the, than the launch. And so we really want to go from launch to full cycle to, you know, like the astronauts landing in the ocean and um, going, you know, having a heat shield and, and having all the techniques uh, and the tools in your toolbox so that you can have a good repatriation. And I love Linda's approach. It's very practical. Things like drive around and explore your neighborhood. And mm-hmm. I love what she is. Talk to your neighbors. There's such a great wealth of knowledge and they want to be welcoming and to help you, you know, and and it goes right into Lindy Chapman, who's, you know, a realtor in Dallas, helping people relocate and helping, you know, to find the schools for the children and to relate as a realtor to what you really are looking for and not just trying to sell you a house. Exactly. That's so important. So one of our promises that we're making to you, the listener, is that our episodes are are close to 30 minutes and that we plan on if we have longer conversations that we will split them up in order that you can hear this yattering in the background when you are washing the dishes, walking the dog or doing all the other tasks that you do. And we We hope that you will follow us and join us in this journey and send any kind of feedback um, that you have. We, you are so appreciated and so loved. That's right, Doreen. And we, we are so excited to, to be doing this and excited to share with everyone. And so for me from Mexico, Hasta la, hasta luego, hasta mañana, hasta pronto. <laughs> Absolutely. And from San Miguel, likewise. Thank you. 